Well, God bless you tonight. Welcome to our midweek power meeting. Hallelujah. Amen. Midweek power meeting. You know, uh, I know that Sunday we get a hold of a dose. Give me be seated. We, Sunday we get a dose of God. And then, of course, you guys get a dose at home while you worship and do your devotions and your practice and your worship. Hallelujah. But Wednesday, we just come again and get some more dose all together as the body of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, praise God. Pastor Christine welcomed all our online viewers and we welcome you also. We are praying for those in Texas and Louisiana and all that area that are, are worried and affected by the storm that's, that they're saying that it's going to take landfall tonight, make landfall tonight. But we're praying and we say to the storm, hush, like Jesus said, hush in the name of Jesus. Say with me all together, hush, hush. in Jesus' wonderful name. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we thank God that we are, we believe a God that controls the storms, but he has given the church authority. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's open our Bibles tonight to the book of Exodus. As we continue talking about the Lord, our healer. Say it with me. The Lord, my healer. Hallelujah. He is our healer and he is still healing. He has not changed. His desire is to be that he heals us. Hallelujah. Amen. Exodus the 15 chapter verses 26. The Bible says this and, and said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and will do that which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians for I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord that healeth thee. Amen. And the other translation say, I am Jehovah, the Lord that healeth thee. Amen. And so that's where we get this wonderful, powerful, compound, redemptive name. Remember, it's two words, Jehovah, our healer, but yet it's also Jehovah Rapha. Say with me, Jehovah Rapha. Amen. He is our healer. Hallelujah. Amen. He is my healer. He is your healer. Hallelujah. Amen. He is the Lord who fixes you. Amen. And so with those powerful redemptive names, we get Jehovah Nisi, which means the Lord, my banner. Say it with me, Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Ra, the Lord, my shepherd. Jehovah Shema, the Lord is there. And Jehovah Tiskanu, the Lord, our righteousness. And there's many more. There's about 16 of them. And so many that describe that are redemptive names of God. Hallelujah. Amen. In Jeremiah, the 17th chapter, if you could turn there quickly, I'm going to read to you from the Amplified. Jeremiah 14, very quickly. Um, um, let's put our beautiful eyes on there. And all those that are watching, please get your Bibles or your notebooks and your iPads and your cell phones. And, and let's, let's study the Word of God together. Amen. I like to say, put your beautiful eyes on there. You know, I got revelation about that. When you put your eyes on there, you become beautiful. The anointing gets on you. A lot of times uh, when we're studying the Word of God and worshiping, people say there's something different about you. I remember one time preaching at a church and some lady came up and says, oh, your eyes are so bright. It was the anointing. Hallelujah. Amen. Now notice this. Let's put our beautiful eyes on her. Amen. In the Amplified, the Bible says, heal me, O Lord. Heal me, O Lord, and I will be healed. Save me and I will be saved for you are my praise. Now notice this. Heal me, save me. Heal me, save me. These are to working always together. When you receive the Lord Jesus Christ, you were saved. You became born again, but also he healed you. He delivered you. He set you free. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we have to see something. Now, we know that there are benefits in the word of God. Say with me, there's benefits. Now, let's quickly go to Psalms. And I'm just kind of reiterating, kind of going over some scriptures that we use so far, thus far. In Psalms, the third chapter, verse 103, excuse me, the 103rd chapter, verses 2, the Lord says, bless the Lord. The word says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Notice what it says, benefits. It doesn't say just one. It says more than one. Uh, who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with love and kindness and tender mercies, who satisfy thy mouth with good things. Say with me, good things. Good things. 
so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Amen. I like that one. So that like the youth is renewed like the eagles. So we have benefits, but we have so many benefits here in this particular verse. He forgives all your sins. Amen. And he heals all your diseases, all your diseases. Say with me. Amen. amen. He forgives your sins, all your sins, and he heals all your diseases. So why is it that people today struggle with healing. Uh, they're standing, they're standing on faith, which is good. They keep standing on faith, which is good. And they go years and years still standing on faith. Why is it that they're not delivered just like they were healed so quickly or, or, or saved so quickly, amen? Well, I believe we need to get revelation of it. I think the body of Jesus, before the world can get revelation, we need to get revelation that Jesus is as easy as he forgives you it's as easy for you to get healed. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, let's look at 2 Corinthians. The reason why he heals you and the reason why he wants to heal you. Now, notice this. God wants you healed. God wants you blessed. God wants you living in his victory that his son paid for. Hallelujah. Amen. Get revelation of this. It's already accomplished. Jesus did it already. We're not trying to get to it. We are already there by faith. Hallelujah. Amen. And the reason why God wants us healed, and we see something in 2 Corinthians, the first chapter. 2 Corinthians, the first chapter. The Bible says, blessed. 2 Corinthians. Did I say 2 Corinthians, the first chapter, verses 3? It says this. Blessed be God. Even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort. Notice this. Not only is he the God of mercy, but he is the God of mercies. Say with me, mercies. Oh, he's so full of mercy. Hallelujah. Amen. He's so full of love. He's so full of the word. He's so full of just being God in our walk. Hallelujah. Amen. So we have to understand something. He is the God of mercies. Hallelujah. Now, quickly go to Titus now. Titus, the third chapter. If he is the God of mercies, and, and let's see even more what we find in Titus, how Titus explained the third chapter, verses four. Uh, the Bible says, but after that the kindness and the love of our God, the kindness and the love of our God, oh my goodness, our Savior toward men appeared. Hallelujah, amen. Kindness and the love of our God, hallelujah, amen. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So it was by the mercy of God. It was not by the righteousness. Hallelujah. It, 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 you know, the Father of mercy. See, the mercy that He has for us. Oh, come on, church. Can you say amen? His mercy kept you going when you didn't realize you were going. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, your, his mercy kept you living while you thought you were not living. Hallelujah. Amen. His mercy. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen to this. I, I, you know, if you can look in hindsight, where you are now, you can say, you can look back and say, wow, this was God's mercy that delivered me. This was God's mercy that delivered me. Hallelujah. Amen. See, you realize later, hallelujah, and you recognize that it was his mercy. I remember one day coming home from church, we were all praising God and singing. And this car came straight at us. God delivered us, made us invisible by the power of the living God. Hallelujah. And we were so excited. I was more excited that, that we didn't get hit, that the car went through us. But later on, I started thinking, oh, it was the mercy of God. It was the mercies of God. Hallelujah. That means he wants us to live and to declare the mercies of the Lord. Hallelujah. He just doesn't want us just to come to church and and get fat and fat and fat and fat and don't do anything about it he wants us to tell the world about the mercies of God what he's done for you hallelujah come on church he's done something hallelujah amen so we are healed and forgiven by his mercy say with me I'm healed and I'm delivered by his mercy hallelujah amen praise God but you know what it's a little sad 
But we must get to that point to understand something or to understand why it's a little sad because, you know, the church as a whole uh, has made a religion that misrepresents God's mercy. Uh, you know, uh, have you heard people say that, well, you know, uh, I hope he heals you. If he doesn't heal you, we'll just uh, remain faithful to him while you're, while you're going through that problem. Or have you heard people say, well, you know what, God uh, used to, Jesus used to heal when he was among the, the disciples. That was during the apostolic time. But, uh, you know, today, uh, you know, it's very rare we see anybody get healed. Uh, you know, only if God wants to do a miracle. You see, we hear that all the time. But notice this. If it is as easy to be forgiven and it is as easy to be healed, then we need to know that. We need to know that. All of us got saved. You, you believe you got saved. And it was so easy when you got saved. It's the same as being healed. When you're, when you're going through something, you need to believe that God wants you healed. Let's look at Matthew, the ninth chapter. Amen. Matthew, the ninth chapter. And let's pick up at verse one. Religion has misrepresented the Lord. Uh, let's look at it. It says, As he, and he entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city. Say with me, own city. Say it again, his own city. Now notice this, that's the key. And behold, they brought, they bought to him a man sick of palsy on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of palsy, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemeth. And listen to what Jesus said. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think you evil in your hearts? For whether is it easier to say thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say arise and walk. But that you or ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Now notice this. He didn't say the Son of God. He said the Son of Man. So it means Son of Man. But that you may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Then saith he to the sick of palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go unto the house. Say Amen. Now notice this. He arose and departed to his house. But when the multitude saw it, they marveled, glorified God, which had given such power unto men. Now, I want you to see this. Given such power unto men. Go back up to verses, hallelujah, verses 5. But that you may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Go back to number 8. But when the multitude saw it, they were marveled and glorified God, which had given such power to men. And as Jesus passed forth from thence, he saw a man. And let's just stop here uh, for a moment. We can read on about all his healing. But what I, wanna what I want you to see something is there has been a misrepresentation on earth that it, it is only God who heals. And if God wants you healed, then he'll do it. If he doesn't, just keep living your life. But notice this. It's God's desire and his mercies that you be healed. And he sent Jesus. Amen. He sent Jesus for us to be healed and we received it. Now, now that we receive Jesus in our heart, he's given us the authority on earth to pray for the sick. He's given us authority to pray for those that are backslidden or those that are lost. He's given us authority to pray for them. Hallelujah. Amen. To lead them to Jesus. To show them that there is a better life than living in sin. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why they marveled that such men had power on earth to do this. Understand something. This is where you and I are. Believers, we have the power on us. First of all, we are healed already by the stripes of Jesus. We're not getting to get healed. We are healed. Therefore, he's given us authority now to believe and to declare the healing on other people. Hallelujah. Amen. And religion has somehow confused that. Now, notice this. The reason why they're representing the Lord wrong is because of wrong teaching. Notice this. We should always have the word of God to lay a foundation in our walk. Listen, don't take what you hear as gospel truth until you see the gospel, which is the truth written on. Amen. Until you see the word of God, can you say amen? So in other words, we have to realize that the misrepresentation is simply because they have not been taught 
or they heard or they saw so-and-so died with cancer and we all prayed for him and what if that person died and some will say well you know God is God he can do what he wants no ladies and gentlemen God is God but he's given you and I the authority and we don't understand why the person died maybe the person did not want to get healed maybe the person did not decide to get healed maybe didn't receive the healing you see what I'm saying so we have to realize it's God's will and either though even though that person did not get healed does it make the word of God a lie hallelujah can you say amen it doesn't make the word of lie so we have to uh, uh, realize that when we set a foundation for the word of God it gives us a security from wrong teaching hallelujah amen now notice this you're gonna run into people that will always give you wrong thinking wrong thoughts but don't take it as gospel truth Amen. Understand and recognize. Maybe you're not. You don't have time to teach that person. But recognize. Maybe they were not taught right. You see what I'm saying? So we have to understand something. God already did His part. Jesus already did His part. Can you say Amen? We only have to believe, and we only have to receive it by faith. All we have to do is believe and receive it by faith that I'm healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, you know when when we were believing God to be healed, that to, when we were believing God for the healing to manifest. Over this COVID, we kept saying, I kept saying, we kept saying, I believe I received my healing in Jesus' name. I believe that I received my healing in Jesus' name. We kept saying it, hallelujah, amen, because that's the way it's supposed to be. I know that Jesus took COVID, so I believe that I received my healing in the name of Jesus. Now drop all the way down to verses 12 now. But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, now notice what he says, that they that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. Let me read it again. They that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. Amen? So in other words, it's the sick folk that God wants them healed. Because remember, he's the father of mercy. Now notice this. How many of us can say that we're living under mercy right now? It's the mercy of God that we live. Amen. And some people don't recognize the mercy. Now notice this. Just, just by joking this, maybe, maybe you don't need any mercy. Just joking right now. Amen. All of us need mercy. But maybe you don't need mercy. You don't need mercy. So what do you need next? <laughs> Amen. What do you need next if you don't have mercy? Then you're going to need justice. Right? Because see, you've have it, you had it all, all well. God has it all well for you. You just need justice now, right? No, we need mercy. We need mercy from God. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's what we have to realize. Say with me, we all need the Father of mercy. Come on, church. We all need it. Hallelujah. Amen. Because see, what he did for us has already been accomplished through Jesus Christ on the cross. Amen. And so we have to realize. Now, look, let's go look at Matthew, the ninth chapter. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, we've been there, right? Uh, look at, uh, well, let's look at uh, 9, um, praise God, Matthew 9, 27. Look at 27. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I want you to see something. Matthew 9, 27 says, And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. Understand something, this is the father of mercy, right? But they know something. Thou son of David, have mercy on us. They know that he was the son of God. Have mercy on us. Now notice what it says here. And when he saw and when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him and said, and Jesus said unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? They said, they said unto him, Yeah, Lord. When he touched he their eyes, saying, according to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were open, and Jesus straightly charged them, seeing, saying, see that no man knoweth it. So let's just go back to verses 28. The blind man uh, asked Jesus, and Jesus said, believe ye that I am able to do this? Question mark. Believe thee that I am able to do this? And they said unto him, yeah, Lord. Then let me ask you this. If he believed that God, Jesus was able, then why is he not healed? Now look at this. Now this is, this is very, very, you have to look at it very closely. We do know that Jesus healed him, but, but he asked him, do you believe? 
So the believing, no telling how long he believed. He had to hear that God was a healer. He had to hear that God is the God of mercy, that the Lord is the father of our healer. He had to hear that because he knew who Jesus was. So in other words, all that time that he knew, he believed, but why didn't he get his eyesight? Now notice what I'm going to say closely. Now you got to listen. It's, it's almost like you have to listen so deep here. Hallelujah. Amen. So believing, he wasn't able to be healed. Right? Why wasn't he able to be healed? Look, look at it again. Believe, believe ye that I am able to do this? They said unto him, Yeah, Lord. They said, Yeah, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. Now, what was it? It was faith that had these men healed. So in other words, by them talking to Jesus and getting closer revelation of who Jesus was and using the faith that they had, they got healed. But it wasn't because they, that they believed that he was able to heal them. It was because of their faith. Can you say amen? See, many Christians today believe that Jesus heals, but they're not acting upon that word simply by not using faith. I know many Christians that are standing in the word. They believe. They believe Jesus healed. They believe Jesus healed. But, but I, I believe one day God will get, I'll get my healing. But I believe Jesus heals. I believe Jesus. Do you see what I'm saying? Do you see what I'm saying? It's very close. You can miss it if you don't understand what I'm trying to say. But listen to this. You can say, I believe, but it takes more than just believing. It takes faith in reaching what Jesus has already done. Can you say amen? Now notice this. Go with me to Mark and let's, let's dig deeper. I believe the Lord is really speaking to us and we're seeing something. Listen, too many people believe, which is good, you believe. But I believe the believing that he's able has to come now to a greater revelation that he, that I have faith, that he can do it, that he already done it for me now. Hallelujah. Amen. We have to have faith in that. Mark the first, chap first, first chapter. Notice what it says in verse 40. Hallelujah. Amen. And there came a leper to him, Jesus, beseeching him. Look at that word, beseeching him. And kneeling down to him and saying unto him, Jesus, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. Now, look at that word, if. If thou wilt, thou can make me clean. Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him and said unto him, I will be thou clean. I will be thou clean. Now notice this. As soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy from, uh, departed from him and he was cleansed and straightway uh, charged him forthwith, sent him away. Now notice this. Let's look at this. This is a little different story from another, the other one we just read. But this man asked Jesus a question. Now notice what he said here in verse 40. Verse 40 says, If thou wilt, can thou make me clean? If thou wilt. Believing is not only the key that's going to heal you. This man, this man says, uh, he came to Jesus, kneeling down and saying unto him, if thou wilt. Almost saying, if, if it's your will, if thou will, if you can, if you want to. And what, and what happened here? Thou can make me clean. So in other words, Jesus came to him, but notice this, it was now the mercy of God that was upon this man. Are you listening, church? It was now the mercy now. Why? Because the word says compassion. Look at that word compassion. Look at the compassion now. Now notice this. And Jesus moved with compassion. That's that mercy. Put forth his hand and touched him and said unto him, I will thou be clean. Now notice this. This is where we have to understand something. Now, the compassion now is working because this is the same mercy that came from God. Now notice this, this is what you and I have to have when we pray for people. We got to have compassion to them. We got to have mercy for them. They, they believe, but they're not healed. They're asking God, but they're not getting healing. And then somehow we tend to say, well, maybe the person's sinning. Maybe the person's not walking right. Maybe the person, you're almost saying like maybe the person doesn't believe, doesn't, doesn't, uh, uh, doesn't uh, deserve it. No, God says, I'm the father of mercies. I'm the father that healeth all. Come on, church. Amen. So we see something here. The question, this is, this is a question. Do you believe 
that Jesus heals, we say yes. But we go further. I believe that I receive the healing that Jesus did for me. Come on, church. You can say, I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe. I believe one day I'll get healed. I believe, I believe. But no, no, it says, that's not, the, that's not the part that you need. You need to be able to say, I believe that I received my healing. Now notice this. This is why Jesus operated compassion. What is compassion really? Think about what compassion is. Compassion describes itself as, as a hurting inside. Uh, 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 a hurting, the Bible calls it, uh, uh, your bowels are being touched because of the, of the compassion that's moving on that. Amen. Now notice this. When was the last time you had compassion for the sick? When was the last time you had compassion for the people? You know, we see people that are sick, but we have more thoughts of, well, what did that person do? No, 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 no. We need to have the same mercies of God, the compassion that they just need to be prayed for so that they can see the glory of God and they can bring glory to Jesus. Not only they bring glory, but others can bring glory to Jesus. Come on, church. See, we forget about what Jesus has already done. We forget about the authority that we have and we forget what God can do to that person when they get healed. Come on, can you say amen? So we have to realize that this is the problem that the church is questioning always. Is it his will for me to be healed? Yes, it's your, his will. Uh, does he heal sometimes? No. He heals all the time. Hallelujah. Amen. You have to know without any question, without any doubt, without any question, and believe that Jesus has already done it on that cross 2,000 years ago. Come on. Give the Lord a praise. You've got to believe it. The moment you get symptoms, the moment you get through going through something, you've got to believe he already done it. Hallelujah. Amen. You're not going to get healed. You are healed. Hallelujah. You're not going to get blessed. You are already blessed. Hallelujah. You're not going to be victorious. You are victorious. You're not going to be a champion. You are a champion. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, church. Amen. Amen. So in other words, compassion moved Jesus. Oh, come on, church. And it wasn't the faith of this man. It was now the compassion. As important as faith is, is important to have compassion. Compassion, because see, that's what we have in us. We have the Father of mercies in us. Can you say amen? Now let's look at Matthew, the 14th chapter. Hallelujah. Amen. Notice what it says in Matthew 14. Hallelujah. Notice what it says in, in, in verses 14. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you, 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 boy, I tell you, this is beautiful. Amen. Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude all together and was moved with compassion toward them and he healed their sick. That's period. He was moved with compassion and healed their sick. He was healing them and was moved with compassion. See, God's desire is that all people be healed because he's the father of mercy. When I drive past this hospital and I see the hospital parking lot full of cars, full of cars, full of cars, there's so many sick people. But do you know, when I pass by there, I feel something. What am I feeling? I'm feeling what father's feeling, the father of mercies. He has mercy. He has compassion. Hallelujah. Amen. When I was believing God for the manifestation of my body, and I, it only lasted a day, maybe two days, I was in bed. The rest, I stood up. I heard the Lord say, sick men don't lay in bed all day. So I got up. Hallelujah. Amen. And listen to this. There was something that I had in my heart about other people that were battling the COVID. Compassion and mercy. You know, people that have gone to the hospital, they don't come back home because they die of this. And so this is where we have to realize, Holly. So in other words, uh, he's still the same yesterday. He's still the same today. And he's still the same forever. Hallelujah. Amen. So that means as he healed yesterday, he heals today. As he forgives yesterday, he forgives today. He's the father of mercies. Now I want you to think about it. Mercies, mercies, mercies. He's the father of mercies. He, he's, he's the father that healeth us. He's the father that delivers us. He's the father that sets us free. Come on church. Mercies, mercies, mercies. Think about it. He's the father of mercies over provision. He, he's the father of mercy over healing. He's the father of mercy over forgiveness. Come on church. We have to realize it. People that are living in poverty it's a demonic attack it's just like sickness but we have to recognize he is the father of mercies over that disease hallelujah can you say amen hallelujah amen so he is a father say with me he's a father hallelujah amen so he was moved say with me he was moved he was moved with compassion hallelujah amen now let's let's look at something go with me to hebrews now 
Hallelujah. Hebrews, the 10th chapter. God is good. He's good all the time. Hallelujah. Amen. And notice this. As I was studying, I realized something so powerful in the Word of God. So powerful that the Word of God, throughout the Bible, if you study the Bible, you always see the love of God. Somehow the enemy always tends to show you the, the anger of God. And somehow we, we try to rely on that. But we have to realize there's more mercy in God than anger of God. There's more the, the, the love of God that he has. That's why Jesus was moved with compassion. He went to the cross for you because of compassion. Hallelujah. Amen. Hebrews, the fourth chapter. Pick it up at verse 14. The Bible says, now notice this. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us, tell me, let us, he's talking to us, let us, let me hold fast our profession or the word confession. Hold fast to your confession. Hold fast to what you believe. Come on, church. Hold fast to it. Uh, some are not solid on the word of God. That's why they move away from the word of God when situations hit them. Some say, why doesn't Jesus do something if he's a God of mercy? Have you ever heard that? Have you ever heard, why, why does God allow this sickness? Why does God allow this poverty? You know, I hear it all the time, especially those that don't understand God. But you know what? Look at this. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold our profession of what we believe, our confession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, which is weaknesses, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. And notice this now. This is the action now. Let us, again, that's you and me, let me, let us, therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. This is where God says, the God of mercies, that we may obtain mercy. He's the Father of mercy, and find grace to help in the time of need. And notice that sometimes we look at that scripture and we think, well, we're, we're really bad. We just need mercy and we need to go to the throne room. No, 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 no. You are made after the likeness of God. He's already delivered you. He set you free. You have authority. You have the name of Jesus. You have the blood of Jesus. All you have to do is just keep your confession and your profession. Keep believing your word of God. Pastor Christine said something. We're going to stand until we see this church uh, full. If we have to go to two services a, a, a day or a Sunday. What does that mean? She's standing. She's standing on the word of God. She's encouraged us. Let's stand on the word of God. Now notice this, uh, we can be discouraged by what we see or we can lean on our profession of what the Lord says, according to Hebrews, calling those things which are not as though they are. Amen. Believing that we have already received what God has given us. Amen. See, we can stand on it and this allows us to have the confession that we have to come into that throne room like a lawyer entering the courthouse of, uh, of the land and speaking before the judge and the jury and the people, knowing the law, he's confident that the law is on his side. He knows the law. He has precedent. And he knows that they'll rule in favor of the law because he has studied the word. Of the word. That's how we are. We need to walk into the throne room and say, Father, I love you. I, you know who I am. I thank you that you delivered me. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus for this person to be healed now in the name of Jesus for what you did. Hallelujah. Amen. So in other words, he already accomplished it for us. We just have to believe. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? amen? We just have to believe and receive it by faith. Come on, church. He already done. He's already accomplished it. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. Oh, he's a father of mercies. He's a father of compassion. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God for that. Amen. amen. He has already done. So, so what's the thing that we have to adjust here? What's the thing that we have to change? First of all, we have to change our, our belief system. What we've been hearing. What you've been seeing other people go through. Come on, church. Maybe like you said, maybe, uh, maybe like we said earlier, maybe because some didn't get healed, you think, well, maybe God doesn't want me healed. No, 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 no. It's the word of God. He wants you healed. It's the word of God. He wants 
all of us healed. Amen. Let's close and going back to Exodus. Amen. Let's go to Exodus as where we started. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. He agrees. And notice this in Exodus. Exodus is the 15th chapter. And this is where, we, that where we've been starting all these series. Notice what it says here. And said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. Listen, listen to the word of God. If we're not listening, let me put it this way. If we're not in church listening to the word of God, how will we know what he says? If we're not watching live streaming, which this is something that we're having now as a tool, then how, and if people are not watching the gospel, how are they going to know? Now this is, this is speaking volumes to people that, that think they already know, but yet have not been healed. This is speaking to people that knows that Jesus is able, but are still going through things. This speaks volumes. Come on, church. And said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord. Listen, but also diligently. Put, some, put, some, put your focus on the word to the voice of the Lord. And will do that which is right in his sight. Maybe you're not living right before the Lord. That's probably why you're not getting understanding of the word of God. Come on, church. Maybe, maybe you, yes, you love the Lord. You obey the Lord. But maybe you're not really walking right. Come on, church. We can, we can stay there for a long time. And we'll do what is right in his sight, like confession, like believing, like saying the word of God, not saying the problem, say what the promise is. See, many people say, I hurt. Yes, you hurt. But if you keep saying, like Keith Moore says, you're prophesying to your future. If you keep saying, I'm still sick, you're prophesying to tomorrow. If you keep saying what you don't have and you keep saying it, then you're prophesying what you're not going to have tomorrow. But if you'll say what you do have according to the word, even though you don't have it naturally, but if you do say what the word of God, then you'll have it. You're prophesying for your future. Amen. And will give ear to his commandment and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon ye, which I bought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Now, if you want to look at Deuteronomy quickly, go to Deuteronomy. Let's look at something. Deuteronomy 28. Now notice this. Starting in Deuteronomy 28. Um, look at, start in verses 16. Curse shall thou be in the city, and curse shall thou be in the field. See where it says all that curse? All the way down. Verse 21, the Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee until they have consumed thee from the land whither thou goest to possess it. The Lord shall smite thee with consumption and with fever and with inflammation and with extreme burning and with a sword, blasting mildew, and they shall, and they shall perish thee until thou perish. And notice as we can read on and on and about all Listen to what it says in verse 20. The Lord shall smite thee with madness, blindness, astonishment of heart. Now look at chapter, um, well, you're in chapter 28. Go with me to verse 61. Are you listening, church? Verse 61. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, them will the Lord, the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. So in other words, you only read a few, but he said earlier in Exodus 15 that I am the Lord that healeth thee. If you will listen diligently to the commandments, listen diligently to the statutes, do what I command you to do, that I'll, have, I'll put none of these diseases that I put upon Egypt. None of these diseases. Now, I would encourage you to look at what you're dealing with and recognize that is it under the curse or under the blessing? You recognize it. And if it's under the curse, then immediately recognize this is an attack of the enemy. Recognize that according to Galatians, he's delivered us from all these curses. Amen? 
See, we can end that simply by recognizing it. But again, I think it has to do with understanding the word of God. Amen. So I want to encourage you tonight to believe that God is your healer. Believe that God doesn't want you sick. Those that are battling sicknesses, those that are battling situations in their life, in their body, whatever it may be. He doesn't want you that way. The enemy wants you that way. He doesn't want you to bring praise. The enemy doesn't want you to bring praise to God. But you know that God wants praise. How do you do that? By delivering yourself with the word of God and say, Father, I'm delivered in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go ahead and stand up, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We thank you that, Lord Jesus, we are delivered from all the diseases that you put upon the Egyptians. For you are God, our healer. You are the Lord, our healer. Jehovah Rapha, our healer. You fixes us, Lord. And Father, we thank you, Lord. As easy as it is to be saved, it is easy as it is to be healed. Healed from sickness. Healed from disease. Healed from whatever the enemy is trying to break us down to. And Father, we thank you that it is as easy as it is to be forgiven. And Father, we thank you, Lord. Lord, we believe that we have received the word of God and you're able to heal. You're able to deliver because you said you are the Lord that healeth us. So we believe. Not only do we believe, we receive that we receive that healing in Jesus' name. Now, Father, I pray for everybody that's watching, that's battling in some situation, maybe battling uh, health issues in the name of Jesus. Now, notice this. Listen to me. Jesus already healed you. You just got to line up with the word of God. The enemy knows what you're saying. And so he's attacking you even more. But if you'll get a hold of tonight and say, no, Jesus has already healed me from COVID or the symptoms of COVID or whatever you're going through. Whatever you're going through. Maybe it's heart issues. Maybe it's sugar diabetes. Maybe whatever it may be. Maybe whatever it is. Or even whatever. Maybe it's uh, strife in the family. Maybe division or it, whatever it is. Whatever is contrary to the blessings of God, it's the curse of the enemy. Whatever it is, you stand tall in that word and you declare the word of the Lord over your life. Amen. Father, I pray for those that are watching tonight. Agree with me, church. Father, we pray for those that are watching tonight, those that are viewing with us tonight. Father, we speak the word of the Lord over them that Jesus is their healer. He already done it. He's already accomplished it. You are healed in the name of Jesus now. You are healed now in Jesus' wonderful name. And we declare it over your body. You are healed by the stripes of Jesus. Do you believe it? Yes, you believe it. Now receive it by faith. Say, say with me, I believe altogether. I believe that I have received my healing now. I believe that I have received my healing now. Say it again. I believe that I have received my healing now. Now give him praise. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We're healed. We're set free. We're delivered, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus that we give you praise in Jesus' wonderful name. And everybody said amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Give the Lord a praise. Come on. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Amen.